As new chairman Tom Perez contemplates the future of the DNC, the stage has now been set for them to potentially clean house. Immediately after Perez's selection as party chairman in late February, an advisor to outgoing DNC interim chair Donna Brazil, Leah Daughtry, asked every employee to submit a letter of resignation dated April 15th. Now, a committee advising Perez on his transition is, as we speak, interviewing staff and others as part of a top to bottom review process to decide not only who will stay and who will go, but how the party should be structured in the future. So it's not just in terms of potentially firing people and then getting new ones to fill those slots, potentially changing up the actual structure of the DNC, which would actually be necessary if they want Keith Ellison's new position as sort of deputy chair to actually mean something and have an actual effect. They would need to structurally change the DNC. So this is significant, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity there. We have reasons to be hesitant in getting too excited about how many people will actually be fired. But a spokesperson for the DNC is trying to tamp down expectations, so that's wonderful. Oh, great. Saying this is longstanding precedent at the DNC and has happened during multiple chair transitions. The process was started before the election of the new chair. From the beginning, Tom has been adamant that we structure the DNC for future campaigns. Current and future DNC staff will be integral to that effort. Over the last few months, the DNC staff has done incredible work under immense pressure to hold Trump accountable. And Mm. Tom Perez recently was quoted as saying, what we're trying to do is culture change. We're repairing a plane at 20,000 feet. You can't land the plane, shut it down, and close it until further notice. So if it was a plane, that is exactly what you should do. <laughs> you should land the plane and close it. What are you talking about? Do it in the air. <laughs> right. Uh, I no. don't think he's an engineer at all. <laughs> he's like, no, no, trust me, I got this. No, Tom, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, no, look, uh, but of course, I actually agree with the, the, the principle he's laying out there, which is look. You can't just shut down. Yeah, yes. what are you gonna, you have to keep that going. Metaphor. And and I think there's a pretty bold uh, way of doing it while it's in the air. It's a good time to do it. This is exactly when you should begin to think about how you transition. Um, And and I'm glad that he's listening to me uh, because here's what I said on November 10th. So the DNC obviously had a miserable failure in this election. Uh, There was a great chance that they were supposed to take back the Senate. Uh, The seats that were up uh, were largely Republican. This was a great opportunity and they blew it. So I, I have said from hour one that everybody in the building should be fired, DNC should uh, of course go in a new direction. You can't possibly keep these losers. Hmm. Well, we'll okay. See. Glad to see that they're uh, listening to the DNC. So that was obviously a couple of days after the election. Now, in reality, that is likely not what's happening. So yeah. they're submitting the resignations ahead of time. That doesn't mean they're all getting fired. Uh, they or even many. Yeah, they're they're going to analyze that now. Uh, the most important part is who is the one doing that analysis? Well, it's the transition team. Now, wait, if you Follow the show or the news closely. You might remember that uh, Nomi Kans, one of our uh, reporters at the Young Turks, uh, broke the story about who was on the transition team. And in the beginning, it was, I believe, uh, 23 out of 24 people were Hillary Clinton supporters, uh, some big Democratic consultants and lobbyists included. Only one was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Oops. Now, they normally would do that, get away with it, nobody would pay attention, and nobody in the mainstream press would ever talk about it. Well, we caught them on it, so then there was a little bit of backlash, and then they were like, okay, we found some Bernie supporters. And they added a couple of Bernie supporters to that team, yes. which is still overwhelmingly establishment Democrats. Yes. So, now, it doesn't really matter because the proof will be in the pudding. The and proof supposedly of- Perez is meeting with Bernie Sanders and. Yeah, and he met with Chuck Schumer and Chuck Schumer said, uh, if Ellison is happy and Bernie Sanders is happy, then I'm happy. Wow, okay, great. But look, we we have positive signs, we have negative signs. It doesn't matter, the proof has never been more in the pudding than this. And if they think they're gonna play another trick where they're like, "Oh my God, we got everybody's resignation. And then the next day they came back in and, <laughs> and the people that, or the ones that we replace are even bigger Democratic consultants that make even more money off of you, <laughs> right? Who knows, they, they might still think it's the old days and they might play a trick like that. Guess what, we're gonna find out, we're gonna know. It's not the old days where you can rely on your buddies on TV to cover your ass. Yeah. And have Morning Joe go out there, oh, I'll tell you what, that is a bold move by Tom Perez. I will declare a progressive wink. Yeah, right? They better watch out. I mean, Namiki does have to sleep a little bit, but not that much. Yeah. And so, on the other hand, if that transition team filled with Hillary Clinton supporters 
does come out with a, a new um, staff that is very progressive and heads in a progressive direction. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm not close to that option. I would love that option. So let's hope that they go in that direction. Well, I mean, I would say the the fear is I'm not so afraid that they won't choose progressives. It's what are they going to do? Because ideology is is one thing, but what is your actual strategy? I mean, Namiki was saying what we should focus on is are they actually just focusing on these big national ad buys? Are they actually investing in state parties and local? I mean, that's sort of structural differences that that you can choose people who might be huge progressives, but if they're focused on the wrong things when it comes to actual elections, then they can fail like any anyone else. So I think that we need to have a clear game plan articulated by Tom Perez and the other higher ups in the DNC. I, that's what I'm waiting to see. At this point, hold and let's find out who they actually hire, fire, etc. And and maybe they 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 think that it's in the minutia. And how do you know if that staffer is progressive or a consultant or you know yeah. friends with lobbyists? It's the internet, my friends. <laughs> we'll probably know. So and at the end of the day, John is a hundred percent right. You know. It's how you run the elections. So if you go back to hiring your consultant buddies at 15% that they take on TV ads and you waste all your money that way and you don't build up any kind of grassroots movement and you don't help the state parties and you don't do what's actually effective strategy, which is knocking on doors. And you don't energize people to show up so they could be volunteers. Instead, you rely on a, a money heavy strategy with big donors and corporations still ruling the place. We're not gonna miss that news story. Yeah. So if you think you're gonna pull the wool over people's eyes, maybe you could for a brief period of time. But push is gonna come to shove and election time is gonna come and you're not gonna be able to kid anyone. Yeah. So right now the ball's in their court, we'll see which way they go. Podcast the Young Turks anytime you want, tytnetwork.com slash join. I think it's weird. No, it's not weird. In fact, you'll think, you know, I'm like a smart person. Do it now, tytnetwork.com slash join.